Uh, a vanilla cream donut. Anything else? That's all. Thank you. Coconut ice cap. Coconut ice cap. And bring my wallet. That's an old boy, isn't it? No, I seriously didn't bring it. I totally forgot it. What? My brother took my wallet to go to Home Depot to buy all this stuff. Because I had... Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. I, um... <laughs> yeah, I know, I was just thinking. So, as... Like, Brandon Bean, to me, is really showing, like, his cards, right? Because you go back and you look at every draft, and every draft just seems to get more and more solid, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's not necessarily in the draft, it's in undrafted free agency, right? Like, they're just always pulling the same type of people over and over and over again. And I'm curious, as, you know, as the Bills spread their fingers across other organizations... You ever think you'd hear that? As the Bills start influence other franchises in the NFL, when do you have to change your tactic? Like, when do you have to change? When do you – because Bean was a catalyst to the way that this the, – the new style of drafting. Catalyst to this new style of drafting, right? Where, like, even with the undrafted free agents, he went out and got, like, top performers on just small clubs. He's not – He's not going out and signing the seventh receiver at Alabama, which a lot of other teams have just historically done. Yeah. He's going out and grabbing, you know, like uh, Neil Payu, the number one receiver from BYU. Yeah. Right? Because he was undrafted. So that's the type of stuff that I think is Bean's calling card now. So when do the Bills have to change? Do they have to change? I think he stays ahead of the curve in that respect where he ends up getting – rid of players or signing players that nobody really sees value in mm -hmm. because he's really looking for one central characteristic and that's leadership. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. The biggest thing with Chuck Knoll was he said, I, I don't need guys that I need to motivate. He goes, if I have to motivate you, I'll cut you. He said, these guys that he's signing, former captains, leaders of their team, yeah. all this other stuff, they don't need motivation. Right. They don't need to be motivated to work hard and do this and that. They just want an opportunity to compete. So you're saying the Buffalo Bills are happy to sign as many Willie Mays Hayes as they can? Is that it? <laughs> he wasn't invited to camp. So. <laughs> Every time you put one in the air, you owe me 20 push-ups. <laughs> But, Mar, I, that begs the question, right? At some point, everybody else knows it, right? Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. But the, and the leader pool gets... Thinner and thinner and thinner. And I think that's one of the reasons why you saw such an exodus when Bean came in. Mm -hmm. There was a mass ex exodus of players, right? Mm -hmm. there, it was. Like, it was to a point where only Reed and Jerry were the only ones left from a previous regime. And yeah. now it's it's only Reed. And they just caught Reed. him a couple times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to uh, no fault of Reed's, you know. To no fault. They're just roster management stuff. But, yeah, yeah it's... It's wild I when you listen to a lot of these guys' interview because that's exactly what comes off is these guys are, like, here. Like, uh, uh, Elam, the number one uh, draft pick, was like, I want the playbook on the plane. Put the playbook on the plane. I yeah. want the – put the playbook on the plane. He said it, like, four times. Said to Terry Pagula, put the playbook on the – I don't think he had any idea who he was talking to. Terry Pagula is a little old man on the porch. He doesn't really ah. – doesn't really – He's you not, ever heard him talk on the phone? It's not Jerry Jones. You know it's a mean? little awkward. You know, that's kind of like the grandparent that lives in another state talking to the teenager. Oh, you're 17 now. Wow. Happy, happy birthday. That's must be really tall. When I was your age, I had a pack of cools roll up in my sleeve. <laughs> I, I understand where you're coming from, but obviously we have to, we can't be remiss to, to, to say Every team has their own specific needs. Yeah. And within those needs, they have players that they like to target 
for to fulfill that role, whether it be business or on the field. And what I mean by that is the Buffalo Bills needed to take a corner from the business aspect to overlap some contracts. Yeah. Okay, because who knows if you're going to have Trey White? You know, who knows if he stays and if you're going to afford him and all this other stuff? So now you have a first round corner to cycle through that. You cycle through, you know, a different position maybe. Um, so that being said, one thing that I heard the other day that was very poignant was this. Everybody that gets drafted or undrafted can play. They're, they're good enough athletes to play anywhere. It depends on what system they go into. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if Tom Brady didn't go to New England, we never would have heard of him. Right. I don't think on his own he would have been the quarterback that he became. And people can argue with me on that all the time. Rodgers, if he went anywhere, would have been amazing. I just think he would have been amazing anywhere. But that being said, um, it just depends on which guys do you feel it's worth taking the chance on. And for Bean, it's guys that you don't have to motivate, you don't have to try to you can start a, light a fire out of their ass to do anything. There are guys, not only that, but there's guys that have been former captains and leaders. So there, there's a bunch of those guys. So I don't think he needs to stay necessarily stay ahead of the curve where people it's gonna it's gonna run out because. There are captains everywhere. There's leaders everywhere. He's just better at finding them than other people. Well, and, and I don't know if it'll run out. Well, it's weird, right? Because you look at draft history, and there's always that definitive line in the sand for Bean, where it's like, okay, we're going to take because we talk about it all the time. Yes. We take that freak athlete, right? Yes. And then there's a definitive line in the sand of, okay, all those guys we're pretty comfortable saying are gone. Now it's time yes. to build off the right because they. When they draft guys, they're not drafting necessarily the best athlete in the fifth round, right? They're drafting the guy that they feel is exactly like you said, motivated. And that's old school football logic. Yeah. You know, and this is a new NFL, but it's there's so much of that old school football logic that still applies. It's why, like, Bean just signed a bunch of offensive linemen as undrafted free agents. Why? Well, you don't really have guard play you're in love with. So just keep, just keep going, right? Yeah. Just keep trying. I saw I saw a video the other day. The guy was talking about um, one pl- one coach he talked to. He didn't say specifically what coach it was. He said he drafted this player over this other player, even though the player that he drafted could have been taken like three or four rounds later. Whoa! And he took him. And he goes, you know why? Because that player that I skipped over, you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna be out till two thirty in the morning at the club. And you're like, oh, so you didn't take him because he'll you know he'll shit the bed the next day? No, no. The next day, he'll go eight catches for 137 yards and a touchdown. He goes, then what do you mean? He goes, problem is that player will also take six other guys with him yeah. that are going to shit the bed. Yeah. He goes, the player I took will prevent those six guys from going out. He's the leader that's going to keep them back. You know, and so that may be the guy that Bean wants. Like, listen, we, we could you could go out and party. You could do this. You could do all that. You could be a loose cannon, which is why we don't we didn't see AB here. Mm-hmm. We don't see all these other guys that maybe. But not that they didn't try. And no, I don't no, blame no. them for trying. Because that was early in the regime. They had to make right. a splash. Yep. And we understand that. Yep. But that all being considered, he, he wants those guys that you don't have to freaking police all the time. Yeah, but isn't there something to be said for having too many cooks in the kitchen, right? Where you just get too many leaders and then you're all stomping on it? like. No, no, no. Because I don't think – I think within that there is a, there's a pecking order mm-hmm. where you have to – all those guys that were leaders had to earn the right to be leaders Mm -hmm. and they want to earn it again. And with football being so cyclical and quick, yeah, these guys might leave Mm -hmm. another group of guys come in. Like you talk about the, the linebacker they drafted. Bernard. Yeah. He he may, no, I wasn't thinking, I I wasn't trying to think of his name. Oh, okay. Um, (laughs) It's trying to like, uh, uh, (laughs) gotta be quicker than that. (laughs) Come on, fishy. Come on, fishy. <laughs> Just take the freaking bait. Um, he may be asked to quarterback that defense in a couple of years hey, if they don't geez, sign for me. So, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. in the natural order of things, he's walking into that locker room where that's his job. He's the leader of the defense. Okay, let me learn from him. Well, and is, then I'll see what I need to isn't do. Isn't there something to be said? Like, don't you? I, I think the draft is a great time to kind of level out the meatheads. Right, because there's a lot of guys who are really good at sports and have always had things catered to them because they were really good at football. Like I'm sure you went to school with a guy who is a phenomenal football player, 
wasn't the best student, never got kicked off the team because they'd always, they just always made it work. And college is absolutely – Manti Teo graduated with a graphics design degree. You think he went to class? He took a major you don't have to, you don't have to be in a room for. Oh, go home, work on this project. I think okay. he went to class as much as his girlfriend did. It's not even too soon. Shut up. It'll be 10 years ago. <laughs> no, but I, I think there's, there's I think something, there's to, be something to be said for that where you have to avoid those guys that are just proud because they've always been good at sports. Bean will never take a Kyler Murray. Oh, man, Kyler Murray just I pisses know. me off so much. I love bringing him up. God, I just hate him so much. I just hate his face. Just his face. I mean, and everything about him, but primarily his face. <laughs> I just can't stand him. I love I just, it. It would just be really funny. I wonder if Josh Rosen's sitting there going, that's the guy you wanted. <laughs>